customize buttons have been added to PTE AV Studio 11 for those publishing to an executable presentation for PC and Mac. Now this is not intended for MP4 videos because we need our computer to operate the buttons. We can use buttons to link to other slideshows, web pages, or we can use them to navigate to different slides within our presentation. So with my first image selected, I'm going to put my buttons over this skyscape. Let's go to the objects and animation screen. I want to lose this bounding box, click into the gray area, click the button, and we'll go immediately to the properties tab. Now we've got all of the familiar buttons that we've seen in the past, but if we go to the theme here and we drop down to customize, there we see something completely different. Now we don't change the button name or text color here. The word caption in white is just a reference until we complete the button style. But we have quite a number of options here. We've got different ways we can view the button vertical three-part gradient, horizontal gradient as you can see, single color. They're pretty self-explanatory I think and that one is quite attractive. But we also get the opportunity to change those colors of course and once again I think most people are going to be familiar with these options. But here we have the border radius so we can drag this slider back to create square buttons or completely to the right to create round ones. Now the default setting is 20 so I'm going to reset that for the moment and of course we've got border size which again I think most people would follow that quite easily and I'll reset that and of course border color. But what we also get to do in this window although I should say at this point once we create a button a good thing to do would be to save it as a preset. But what we can also do is to adjust the button for normal, hot and pressed. Now normal is the button as your viewer sees it. Hot is how they see the button when the mouse hovers over it and we can change the colors and or the gradient by just ticking this little box here and make the changes we want and pressed is what they see when the button is clicked. Let me give you a quick demonstration of that. As you can see here, I've opened up a full screen preview and I've created two buttons. The effect we're going to view will only work once we assign an action on a mouse click and that's down at the bottom of the properties and we'll look at that in a moment. But if I mouse over this button that's not connected to anything, of course we don't see anything. But this one we've just set up, that's what the viewer sees when we mouse over and when I click it changes to green and on this occasion I just linked it to my website just to prove it'll work fine. Now coming back into the objects and animation screen in the properties tab it's over on the right hand side that we get the opportunity to adjust what the viewer sees on the button. And of course the button has to increase in size to take up those letters. And we've got the usual other options of color, bold, italics. But of course we can even adjust the color for when we've got a hover and a clicked button, just on the text alone. And at any time of course we can go back into the customize and make changes. And of course one of those would be to save a button that we've created as a preset. OK that, OK that, and what I'll do is I'll just select that button and delete it. So if we've come back to another page in our presentation and we bring up the button, all I've got to do here is to go to my Customize, Button Presets, User Presets, and there we have it straight away. Now the preset doesn't save what's written on the button because presumably every button will need something slightly different. So here with a full screen preview I've got three of the new buttons. As you can see I've got the one which opens a website and as I mouse over that and click we go straight to my website. 
although a little bit slow loading. Let's close that down. The next one is another slideshow, so we could have all of our slideshows driven from buttons. When I click that, the slideshow will open. Welcome to Australia. And I'll escape from that. And if I wanted to go to page three, well, there we are, taken straight there. Now coming back to the objects and animation screen, I've removed the links in those buttons. Let's take a quick look at how we apply them. So I've got the open website button selected. If I go right down at the bottom of the properties, there's the option we want, actions on mouse click. So here I'd need to open a web page and just type in my web address. Here I would go to maybe run a slideshow with return to my button page. And when I do that, then I would need to click this option and locate it. And in the final one, I would go to, where's the page? It says, go to a slide with name. But here, if I open this up, there I can select my page three. Now, once I save this and test it, I'm pretty certain all of those would work fine. Now, one of the other options we now have in the objects and animation screen is we can change the stacking order of images, video and or text with a simple drag and drop. With this example, you can see page one is the cloudscape at the bottom of the stack. So the two images above, of course, we can see. But if I was to click and drag page one up the stack, when I drop over that blue line, now page one is at the top of the stack, so it's hiding the other two. Now be careful when you drag these because we can drag into a parent and child relationship. As I drag this, you'll see that if I wanted it at that position, then I drop on the blue line. Let me put that back just for a moment. But if I wanted it to be a child of page three, then I drop over the page three when that is highlighted. Now you can see a different thing. But if you make a mistake and do that by accident, don't worry, just drag it out and we can drag it to the bottom of the stack once again. But it's going to be pretty useful because if, for example, I wanted to bring page two to the front of the one at the top left, then I can just drag that up the stack. Now we do still get the opportunity to right click and we can choose the order here and we even have our shortcut keys. If we hit the control key page up page down that also does the same thing. But click drag and drop is I suppose we could say the modern way.